Hey, Void. So, I mentioned at the end of October that I was going to start varying things up, reviewing a few things outside my normal horror sci-fi thing, so anything I watch, I'm going to be talking about. At least I watch in its entirety. And in part of doing that, I'm going to be occasionally jumping to the... Then, using my collection app, I'm going to be jumping to the front, watching whatever is the first one alphabetically, and slowly work down. As occasionally I grab and pick and choose as well, so eventually I'll one day get through everything that I own. So, in doing so, jump back to the top and was hit with the Dot Hack series. Which, if uh, anyone's familiar out there with it, I've got the big poster of on well, the wall scroll of Dot Hack hanging out behind me, so I'm a big fan of Dot Hack in general. So, Unfortunately, my copy of Dot Hack's sign went missing years ago. I've yet to replace it, so that one's not going to be on my immediate watch list, unfortunately. If I should happen to replace it, I'll probably watch it soon. But the first one that came up, Dot Hack Legend of the Twilight. A bit of fluffy nonsense and an exercise in mediocrity. Okay, first off, for those of uh, you watching that don't know Dot Hack, it's essentially in the vein of Sword Art Online bef years before Sword Art Online. It Dot Hack is a more of a philosophical take on things for the most part, as it goes into who what is real, what isn't, and the nature of AI in general particularly throughout the main series of Dot .hack sign and into the Dot .hack video games from the PS2. The main plot of those revolving in an incident with people falling into comas while playing the game, and people trying to search within the confines of the game to figure out what's happening and why. And it's Dot .hack sign itself takes a deep philosophical approach to it. It's a lot of searching and conversations and not so much action. And the video game takes up immediately thereafter as they resolve the issues. I'm a big fan. Gameplay is a little shaky on the for the video game, but the story I really enjoy, particularly the characters. Dot Hack Legend of the Twilight is a adaptation of the manga, which takes place at least I don't know, uh they kind of are a little nebulous in this on the time frame, but I'd say five to st somewhere between five and ten years after the original. Okay, now the manga is three volumes long, and the detailings of it are one of the main points of Dot Hack Sign into Dot Hack into Dot Hack was it revolved around the birth of the ultimate AI Aura. Dot Hack sign showed her awakening, and Dot Hack the game was pretty much about finding and defending her from a program that had become sentient itself. The program that it was designed to awaken her, but after having done so, its purpose fulfilled, it was facing deletion itself, so it began essentially trying to undo its own work so it could start again. It was an interesting storyline. Now, the manga for Dot Hack Legend of the Twilight, colloquially usually known as Dot Hack Dusk because this is a mouthful, then revolved around uh, essentially another life phase of Aura, as she was, in order to become the perfect AI, also had to experience every, as much as she could that a non AI would, and it essentially revolved around the daughter of Aura. Essentially, a group of uh, two character or two players win. Uh, the ability to use the original skins of two of the legendary dot hackers, Kite and Black Rose, and uh, are brought into the game by Aura, who gives Kite the bracelet, who which gives them the ability to hack the game, and uh, they end up finding her uh, a character named Zephy, which is Aura's daughter, and they're trying to escort her to a particular point. Meanwhile, a lot of the characters who work for the company are trying to interfere. Now, this has nothing to do with that at all. So, despite them adapting, this pretty much takes the characters and the basic premise of that manga 
just the fact that uh, two of them are now being kite and black rose. Rose. And does nothing with that premise and does his complete own thing in a bit of fluffy nonsense. And it's okay at best and very awkward in other means. So, Dot Hack has always been very strong with its characters. Here, however, they are a bit gutted, I will say. Shugo and Reina, which are the Kite and Black Rose duplicates, are pretty much as was written in the manga, so they're okay, but they play up their twin relationship to an uncomfortable level of almost being romantic. I mean, I get they're trying to go that they've been separated in real life, and the game is the only place they can see each other. But the way it handles it, it sounds like they're old lovers that are trying to rekindle, and it is awkward. Very awkward. The other characters don't fare too much better. And mostly at any backstory they have is either hinted at slightly or never commented on. Which is a shame. So, some of the other lead characters include Mirei, which is the very young daughter of Mistral from the original Dot Hat games. In this, Mirei simply looks exactly like Mistral, acts like Mistral, but they never actually touch on the fact that she is Mistral's daughter. It's never brought up. Uh, Oka is pretty much, uh, both her and Oka are pretty much reduced to a one-note characters, which it's either rare item or item, or want to, or want to fight, uh, the new, uh, I want to fight, I want to fight. And that's, they don't really branch out beyond that. Oka fares a little bit better, uh, better than Mirei, but it is noticeable. Uh, Hotaru also uh, has her backstory pretty much stripped away. It's still there and hinted at, but they never explicitly come out and say what's going on with her. Now, she's an American in that's playing on the Japanese server. I've heard back and forth whether she was a, a boy playing a female character or a... then. Uh, or is actually a girl. That's irrelevant to this. They don't touch on it either way here, but I do remember reading something about that somewhere, but that's lost into the annals of my mind. Anyway, uh, the, one of the main focuses was that she was didn't speak Japanese well and was playing on the Japanese servers to try to learn the language. It manifests a little bit here as occasionally she mishears or misunderstands something, but it just seems like she's not paying attention or is bad at hearing rather than it being a language difficulty. So, her explanation is kind of not really there. Also, she is a pacifist that wants to make friends with the monsters in the game. This again, the, other than the fact that she doesn't carry a weapon and only uses healing, she doesn't explicitly say. It doesn't actually come up that she's a pacifist. So, pretty much... The characters are very dumbed down. Uh, Balmung, one of the original characters from the series, is back as a, working as an administrator and with a unique sense of humor. He's he's pretty much played fine, but his assistant Reki's actions seem so out of left field that they were able to build them up better in a three-volume manga than over a 12-episode series. So a lot of it is frustrating. Uh, the, what is the plot of this actually about now? Uh, a bunch of elementary school hackers get in touch with a wandering AI that so they can study death by causing death within the world. So you have a bunch of really sociopathic elementary schoolers not caring that they're putting people into comas or metaphorically killing them. It's random. I mean, if handled a little bit better, this could have been an interesting, uh, I mean, a story like that fits very well under the .hack universe. There's about uh, the nature of death and death within the world. That could have gone somewhere, particularly with this new character that's running things, Morty. But they really don't. And the endings of it are rather abrupt. 
Also, the character of Ren, I get sidelined, I think, in uh, oh the fifth episode, and uh, pretty much plays uh, Komato's victim through pretty much up until the end from there, so she spends three-fourths of the series uh, wandering on her own or asleep, so... It's, and then it's Asuna from Sword Art er, Online before Sword Art did it. I mean... The series is... It's not... I will say I wasn't completely bored watching it. The, a lot of the humor does land, and the characters are still fun to watch, but knowing how much it could have been is what really kind of detracts in this case. This is this was definitely the poor man's dot hack. It's, it's Roots is a much better experience for act, uh, an action area. Sign is a much better philosophical, oh, emotional experience. This one tried to be the fluffy comedy, and I guess it's fluffy, but it's kind of an outlier in the Dot Hack universe. I haven't seen Dot Hack Quantum, but I've also heard very good things about it, so this one's pretty much the weak point. So, I'm going to give this one a three, MacGuffins. It's unnecessary. You get more out of a three-volume manga than a 12-episode series. This one aired back in 2003. The animation is fine, just very bright, very colorful, and very happy-go-lucky seeming, which, considering they're trying to discuss the nature of death at a philosophical means towards the end, it is a little jarring. But Dot Hackers always gets into those territories, so I can't say that was too much of a surprise, but it just didn't fit the tone of everything else that they were doing. Alright, that's about all I got on this one. I can't see myself rewatching this very often. Every once in a great while, maybe, but that's about it. Alright, have a good night, everybody.